Hello. Today, I want to talk about why 95% of your brain may not currently be working for you. So stay with me as we talk about the subconscious mind. Hi, I'm Sheridan. Let's talk about your subconscious mind. Scientists estimate that roughly 95% of our entire thinking is subconscious, the bit we're not even aware of. What's more, that information, that subconscious information is mostly accumulated during the first seven years of your life. So everything you've been doing since you were seven has been guided by 95% of unconscious power of which more often than not, you're completely unaware. The good things about this are that's how we can walk. That's how our heart keeps beating. Our brain is keeping parts of our body functioning. It's keeping everything going that we need to do that we don't want to have to relearn, like learning to walk on a daily basis. But it's also controlling every reaction, our perception and how we feel, how we respond to given situations. And of course, all our habits. So if seven years were spent accumulating that information, watching other people, observing how things are done, absorbing our environment, and from that we gathered all that information, 95% of it, that then acts as the kind of undercurrent to how we lead the rest of our lives. So, so much of this doesn't, of course, work for us. And that's because we form habits. We form little negative thinking habits that dictate how we feel about ourselves and how we go forward in everything we do. Perhaps one of the biggest things our subconscious mind does is it sets our expectation level. Now, there's no magic to this, but generally speaking in life, if you expect something to happen, it's more likely than if you don't. For example, you're going for a job interview and you're sitting in the corridor, waiting outside the room, waiting to go in. And someone comes up to you, a complete stranger, and says, hey, Sheridan, I shouldn't really tell you this, but I'm afraid he's already given this job to someone else. And by the way, because I, I just kind of heard a whisper in the wings, he doesn't actually like you very much, so, so, so be warned. Uh, I'm afraid you haven't got this job, but you better go through the process anyway. So you think, oh Lord, uh, and you go in anyway, uh, and you do your job interview, but you probably don't feel very good about it. You already feel, well, this guy doesn't like me. What's the point? He's already given the job to someone else. And your expectation level would be low and you'd be far less likely to give a good interview. If the opposite were true, so you're sitting in the same corridor, waiting for the same interview, and the same stranger came up to you and said, hey, Sheridan, just thought you should know, He's actually already got you down for this job. This interview is, is, is a mere formality. He loves everything you do. So all you've kind of got to do is go in there and be yourself and everything will be fine. How different would your approach be to that interview? Because your expectation was good. So you'd walk in with a smile on your face and a spring in your step, uh, and you would probably be your most relaxed and most confident and far more likely to get the outcome you want, namely that job. So that's just one example of how our expectation levels will set the results. As I say, it's not magic, but it does stack the odds in your favour. What the subconscious mind has done, and it's doing it right now, is it sets your expectation level unless you choose to change it. So for example, if you drive to work every day and you take exactly the same route, the same roundabouts, the same exits, and then one day you think, oh, right, I'm gonna to get to this roundabout and I'm gonna take a different exit. I'm gonna go left instead of straight on. That can take quite a lot of conscious thought because you're trying to break the pattern, the autopilot that has been set by your subconscious mind. Well, everything works in exactly the same way. So for example, if you take a rubbish bin and move it from one side of the room to the other, it'll take about a month before you stop trying to throw bits of paper away where it used to be and actually make that mental adjustment to, to throw things in its new position. So our whole life is governed by our subconscious mind, which as I say, is roughly 95% of our entire thinking power. So how do we change that? How can you make your subconscious mind work for you? Well, the first thing we've already done, we've made you aware of it. We've made you aware that the little 5% bit that you're using, which often won't seem to serve you and do the things you wish it would for you, is only 5% and you've got that other 95%. So being aware of that is one thing. 
But what are we dealing with? Well, we're dealing with habits, long fixed habits. The way the brain works, there are things called neural pathways. And these are like roots that we've carved in our brain. They're, they're thinking habits, good and bad, but the ones we're not aware of are often the ones that don't help us, the bad ones. So you've carved these grooves in your brain, these neural pathways, and they become very firmly fixed habits of how we respond, how we act, and how we feel, and so on. So there's a lot of undoing to be done. So going back to the roundabout example, it's like consciously taking a different exit from the one you've taken for weeks and weeks, months and years, and changing that habit. And you have to do it a few times before it stops being autopilot to take the route you've always taken. Our thinking works exactly the same way. So how do we undo this? How can we make our subconscious minds work for us rather than against us? The odds seem heavily stacked against us because we've had years and years and years of accumulating these neural pathways, these negative thinking habits. Well, there are a few ways of doing this and some really, really cool things. And one I'm going to tell you at the end of this video, which I think is, is incredibly helpful. But the first is, I think, when we catch ourselves going into our pit, we catch ourselves feeling the way we wouldn't choose to feel, know that that's your subconscious mind that's leading you because it's happening without you even being aware of it. And one of the, one of the things you can do that works really well is just to say, stop, and maybe have an action, stop, that is like that. And that is effectively blocking that neural pathway, blocking that negative thought habit, and allowing you to back up to that roundabout effectively and then take a new exit. So you say, stop, you ask yourself, is this thought serving me? If it's not serving me, what thought would serve me? How can I reframe this situation to best help me and then move forward in a new direction? Easier said than done. You've heard me talk about the little voice in your head that tells you all the things you wouldn't choose to believe about yourself. It's the same thing. Just notice that little voice, stop it in its tracks, and then make a new decision to follow a path that will benefit you. That's one way. Another way of conquering that subconscious mind and helping it start to work for you is repetition. After all, it's repetition of bad thoughts over the years and years and years of your life so far that have taught it to work the way that it does. So to undo that, of course, takes some doing. One of the ways of changing this is to change our self-talk. That means change our inner dialogue, change eventually how we see ourselves and how we perceive certain situations. And we can do this by taking certain situations and beliefs and by self-talking the exact opposite out loud, we can gradually reprogram the subconscious mind so that it starts to work for you rather than against you. For example, if you believe that you're nervous and lacking in confidence, you would not say, I believe that I am not nervous and that I don't lack confidence because that is actually acknowledging the negative. What you would do is you would say, I feel fantastic, I feel super confident and I'm raring to go. And the brain with repetition will take that on board and start to act as if that were your belief. And even saying those words now, I feel fantastic, I feel confident, I feel full of energy and I'm raring to go. Even saying that right now is sending positive triggers to my brain and I can feel my confidence growing as I say these words. Now, as I said, we've got a lot of undoing to do. Thinking has formed habits over many, many years. So we need to do quite a lot of this. So it's finding a safe place where you don't feel stupid to say, I feel confident, I feel in control, life is going to be fantastic. Every day in every way I'm getting better and better. And you constantly repeat this every day in every way I'm getting better and better. I feel fantastic. I feel superb. And it feels very self-indulgent. But you know what? Over time, it works. So if you're feeling a bit down one day, that's your subconscious mind with all its bad thinking habits dug up from the past. Well, just take a second, stop and then refire yourself by giving yourself some really positive self-talk. So that's another way that you can gradually reprogram your subconscious mind so that it works for you. Another way is to visualize, which means vividly imagine things the way you would like them to be. 
So for example, if you're an actor going to an audition and you're terrified as you're about to go in and, and meet the casting director and do your monologue and your song, then what I would do is reframe that in your mind and think, just imagine, right, imagine yourself walking in with a spring in your step, feeling super confident with a big smile on your face and a confident firm handshake as you meet the casting director. Imagine yourself doing the monologue flawlessly and singing your song beautifully as you've never done before. And then imagine their response as they sit there looking impressed and, and proud of your performance. And again, you're helping to set the expectation level of what then is far more likely to happen just by firmly visualising. Sometimes stage hypnotists call this playing a movie in your mind. Literally run a movie in your mind of how you would like the outcome to be. Again, these are not magic tricks. They're just things you can do over and over again on repeat that gradually can reprogram your autopilot that is currently working against you instead of for you. The subconscious mind works at its best when in abeyance. So to put that in normal terms, when you're asleep or peaceful or resting, that's when your subconscious mind can work for you and of course against you. How many times have you woken up in the morning feeling a bit down or a bit low or a bit like, oh, another day, I really can't face it. Well, if you've had four, five, six, seven, eight hours of sleep, that subconscious mind has been hammering away at you with all its current beliefs. Or if you told it something negative last thing at night, that's going to stay with you and grow like a cancer while you're asleep. And then that's going to be what sets you up first thing in the morning if you're not careful, but equally this is how it can work for you. Have you ever tried to learn anything off by heart, like a poem, or again, a monologue if you're an actor, and you learn the words and they just won't go in, you spend all evening trying to learn these words and you keep putting the book down and see if you can do it without looking, and it's just not going in and it's really frustrating. And then you go to bed and you wake up in the morning and then at breakfast, the lines just come to you and it's fluent. And bizarrely, they've carried on learning themselves while you've been asleep. It's why you can learn a song or a piece of music and then leave it for a few weeks and it assimilates during the time that you don't even work on it. And then when you go back to it, you find you know it better than you did when you last visited it. That's because the subconscious mind is working for you. So how do you use this? Well, I would recommend when you go to bed at night, if you've got a problem or, or a decision you need to make, then set your subconscious mind to work for you while you're asleep, because the subconscious mind loves solving problems. So if you say to it last thing at night, even out loud if you can, or if not, just internalize it, say, subconscious mind, I'm going to go to bed now with this decision. I don't know whether to do this or whether to do this. I leave it to you. You'll wake up in the morning and suddenly you'll have clarity and the thing you really weren't sure how to deal with uh, becomes much, much more obvious and you, you realise that you can now make that decision. So there are a few thoughts on the subconscious mind. It's incredibly powerful. It's 95% of you. So it's worth learning how to tap into that. So just remember to self-talk out loud, to visualise things how you want to be, and then set your mind to work a positive task before you go to sleep, because it will do that for you. So the subconscious mind is a huge topic and it leads on to all sorts of other topics like the law of attraction and how we can get what we want. Well, there'll be another video on that coming very soon. If you're enjoying this content, please put a comment below, give it a like, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell and I will see you again very soon. Bye for now.